I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on rearranging the formula to change the subject. We have five examples here with multiple similar kind of questions within those examples. In question number one, we'll make B as the subject of each formula given below. So when I write A equals to B plus 3, A is the subject, right? Now we could always write this equation in terms of B by doing the reverse operation. So if I take away 3 from both sides, I get B equals to A minus 3. So reverse operation will help you solve question number 1, question number 2. Make X as a subject of each formula given below. This is actually similar to question number 1. Slightly more calculations may be required. Question number 3 make b as a subject of each formula given below. Now when you have a square plus b square equals to r square and you want to make b as a subject, you will take a square to the other side. Now when you do square root, which is the inverse operation of square, you can isolate b, right? But remember, you have to put plus and minus when you square root. Whenever b is in square root, you need to square to get the value of b. Now, question number 4 and 5 are actually thinking questions. So we have taken up some popular test questions here. So time t equals to 2 pi square root L over g. You may have to isolate g here. Similar equation, right? So here are few questions which are very critical to understand are, are these. Right? So I'd like you to definitely try these questions out, uh, solve. All right, and then uh, you will be sure that you know the technique. Now, question number five is you are given a quadratic equation. Now, here it is not easy to isolate x, and the technique to do that is completing squares, right? So, that should be done by using completing squares method. So reverse operation actually work practically for 90%, right? Sometimes you may have to use a cross multiplication and other techniques like completing the squares. Now we'll take these examples one by one and master the technique of changing the subject. So let's begin with simple ones which are kind of linear equations. We have A equals to B plus 3. Reverse operation, as I was saying, is basically you need to take away 3 since you need to find what b is and when you do that you get a minus 3 equals to b right so we have isolated b and now the subject has been changed to b right b is equal to a minus 3 is that clear to you that is how you will do it now if it is 5 times b first operation is minus 1 so we'll add 1 right so we get a plus 1 equals to 5 times b now, reverse operation of multiplication is division. So you'll do a plus 1 divided by 5 equals to b. Perfect. Now here, we'll use the technique of cross multiplication. You can multiply both sides by 4. You get 4a equals to b minus 5. And now the reverse operation, 4a plus 5 equals to b. Is that clear, right? So it's so simple. Now in this case, we'll again cross multiply. So these are similar to what we just had. Okay, so I'll do one of them. Let me do this one. So cross multiply, you get 2p equals to 3 times within brackets b minus 1. Now, you should first divide by b. If you open the bracket, you will definitely get the solution, but two extra steps will be required. So when I divide by 3, I get 2 over 3p equals to b minus 1 and now I can add 1 right so I get 2 over 3 p plus 1 equals to b right we have isolated b now when we are isolating b normally you should write b on the left side but even if you leave it on the right side it is okay right so uh, so keep that in mind you could leave it like this also but preferred will be b is equal to 2 over 3 p plus 1 is that clear to you right Okay, this is very similar to just what we did, so you can try this out. I'll do the last one here, f. 
so we need to isolate b now in this case it is better to do minus 1 first right so we get a minus 1 equals to negative 2 over 3b right what is the reverse operation of this negative 2 over 3 times b definitely what should you do you should actually multiply by negative 3 over 2 to make this expression on the right as just b right so that is what will help you get the solution so that becomes the answer for part f here is question number two where we have three examples uh, first and second are very similar so i'll do one of them and then take up c so we need to isolate x so make x as the subject of each formula given below so first step should be divide 5 by a right so we have uh, uh, x minus 1 equals to 5 divided by a the next step is we can write x equals to 5 divided by a plus 1 correct so that is your answer at times you could also go one more extra step writing this as 5 plus a right but that is not really required the last one here is with q so now 4 equals to a times x minus 2 whole q first you need to divide by a so order of operation is very important to consider while solving these types of equations or isolating the variable and changing the subject so 4 over a is now equal to x minus 2 whole q to get this expression we have to do the cube root of 4 over a right then we get x minus 2 now we can add 2 that is the reverse operation so we get 2 plus cube root of 4 over a and that is equal to x correct so we get here x is equal to now you could write it even like this right cube root of 4 over a plus 2 either way it is correct here is question number three so I'd like you to pause the video, answer this question, and then look into my suggestions. Question number three. Make B as a subject of each formula given below. So we have here A square plus B square equals to R square, right? We need to isolate B, make that as a subject. So we'll take away A square. So we can write this as B square equals to R square minus A square. Now, to get B, we have to square root, right? So, we square root. But remember, whenever you do square root, you have to write plus and minus, correct? So, so that is kind of important to understand. Now, there could be situations where we may say that we are talking about a right angle triangle, right? So, so let me make a right angle triangle here where the sides are, uh, let us say, A, B, and C, right? So in this case, using Pythagorean theorem, you know that a square plus b square is equal to c square. Now in this case, all a, b, c are positive, right? So here, when you isolate, you get c square minus a square, and when you do square root, you will only take the positive value. The reason being is that a, b, and c are all greater than or equal to zero, right? So, there is no need to take the negative value. That is kind of important to understand. So, many times in real life situations, we may have to use only one of this, but in general, we should use both, right? So, that's a word of caution. Okay. Now, here we have a square root b plus c equals to 4. We can write this as uh, a square root b. Let me copy the question first, right? We'll take C on the other side. So we could write this as A square root B equals to 4 minus C. Now we need to divide by A, right? So basically we are doing reverse operations, right? Now this is square root. To get B, we'll square both sides, correct? So we'll square both sides. And what we have here is this expression. So that is the formula written with B as the subject, clear? The last one here is, so what should you do first? Well, x is equal to 1 plus 5 square root b over 2a. First, we should take away 1, right? So we get x minus 1 equals to 5 square root b divided by 2a. 
now we need to multiply by 2a so we get x minus 1 times 2a equals to 5 square root b now we can divide by 5 right so now these two operations could be done simultaneously also right i could have multiplied by 2a over 5 also right now we'll square both sides so let's square this over 2a over 5 whole square equals to b is it clear so that is how we are going to isolate this particular equation now question number four make indicated variable as a subject so let me do this one we need to isolate g and make that as a subject t equals to 2 pi square root l over g so first step we'll divide by 2 pi so we get t divided by 2 pi equals to square root of l over g now we can square both sides correct so we get whole square equals to l over g now to get the value of g we could cross multiply right so g equals to l times g comes on this side right so cross multiply and here we get 2 pi over t whole square does it make sense to you that gets flips right so at times we can open this and also write this as uh, 4 pi square l over t square is it clear so that is how you should do it i like you to pause the video try part b and then we'll move on to C. Well, here is the solution. So first step, we'll do A divided by 2 pi, right? And we have square root of 3 minus B over C. Squaring, we get A square over 4 pi square, correct? I squared it. And now we have 3 minus B over C. Multiply by C, so we get A square C over 4 pi square, right? Equals to 3 minus B. Now, B is negative now. So it's better to bring b to the left side so we get b equals to it becomes positive and 3 minus all this right so 3 minus a square c over 4 pi square so now b has become the subject is that clear to you now this is a very unique example we need to isolate v now to isolate v what should we do well one way is uh, well i'll give you the most effective way so we'll just take v, take out this 1 over u to the other side. So we can write 1 over v as equal to 1 over f minus 1 over u, correct? So we took u to the other side and 1 over f minus 1 over v, u becomes equals to 1 over v. Now we can take common denominator. So when you take common denominator, it, take, it becomes f times u and you cross multiply, correct? So that is 1 over v. Now we can flip it, right? Reciprocal. So we get v equals to f times u over u minus f. So this is the technique for isolating such uh, expressions which involve fractions. Part d, e, and f of question number four make the indicated variable as the subject. Now in this case, the indicated variable is uh, is x right so for all of them it is x now here we have rational expressions right 2x minus 1 over x plus 2 how do we do this technique for this is to cross multiply and then solve right so we'll actually cross multiply so that really means we get this as y times x plus 2 equals to 2x minus 1 now we can Collect the like terms, we have yx plus 2y equals to 2x minus 1, yx, bringing 2x to this side and the other term on the other side, we get minus 1 minus 2y, correct? Now, x can be taken common, so factor out x, we get y minus 2 equals to minus 1 minus 2y, and now we can isolate y, x, and then write this as minus 1 minus 2y over y minus 2 is that clear to you so that is how we could write this answer now this answer in multiple choice questions could be written in many different ways we could also take minus outside and write 1 plus 2y over y minus 2 is that clear to you right or we could also write this as 1 plus 2y over 2 minus y so all these ways are correct ways of representing 
the same equation with x as the subject. Is that clear to you? Perfect. So that is how you're going to do it. Now I'll leave this question for you to try and we'll go straight with part f. Where this is similar, the only thing is there's square root, so we'll square both sides. So we get a square equals to x plus 1 over x minus 1. Now we cross multiply, so we get a square times x minus 1 equals to x plus 1. So that gives you a square x minus a square equals to x plus 1. Bring the like terms together, right? And the other terms on the other side. And now factor out x, we get a square minus 1 equals to 1 plus a square. And we get x equals to 1 plus a square divided by a square minus 1. Correct? So that is how it should be done. Question number 5. Here we have a quadratic equation and we need to change the subject and we need to make x as the subject of each formula given below right now how do we do this we need to complete the squares to solve this particular question now let us see how to complete the squares remember this a plus b whole square equals to a square plus 2ab plus b square so here I have x squared plus 2x, right? x squared plus 2x. To write this as uh, something like, uh, like we have shown, a plus b whole square, we need to complete the square, right? So let us see how to do it. So we could actually uh, work with this part on the right hand side. So we have x squared plus 2x. Half of 2 is 1. So we add and subtract 1 square, right? So that's what we do. But when we do that, you will realize that we get a perfect square and so this is called squaring completing the squares method right so we get x square uh, sorry x plus one whole square minus one and that is y right now we can isolate x we'll do reverse operation adding one first so we get y plus one equals to x plus one whole square then we square root it so we get y plus one square root remember to put both plus and minus equals to x plus one and then we can take this one on this side so we have plus minus square root y plus one minus one equals to x is that clear to you now apply the same technique and do the last question of this particular video right so here we have y equals to 2x square minus 2x minus 6 here is slight difference we have the leading coefficient as 2 not 1 so in this case what should we do we need to factor 2 first right so we need to factor 2 first from the first two terms we get x squared minus 4x and we'll keep this 6 aside now we repeat this process we have x squared minus 4x half of 4 is 2 so we add and subtract 2 squared correct so we get the first three terms as a perfect square it can be x this is minus and that is 2 whole square right and minus 2 square is minus 4 now we open the bracket so we get 2 times x minus 2 whole square 2 times minus 4 is minus 8 and then minus 6 so we get 2 times x minus 2 whole square minus 14 correct now you can isolate x correct follow this method so first step will be you will do y plus 14 correct let me do all in one step y plus 14 correct then you will divide by 2 then you will do square root when you do square root you have to do plus and minus and then you'll add 2 to get the value of x and that is how you change the subject when you are given a quadratic equation so I hope that helps you to understand uh, how to work with different kinds of situations where the question is to change the subject, right? We'll actually take up one more video where we'll take some typical examples which could be slightly difficult. But I hope that gives you a good starting point. Feel free to write your comment, share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.